And now we're going to go to uh, a special guest that, personally, I've been waiting to have on this show for quite a while. Uh, he is he's a very busy uh, presidential candidate, and I'm, I'm grateful that he is giving us some of his time tonight. Because uh, I know during the primary season, I tried to uh, get uh, this gentleman on the phone with us here, and it just... It was that difficult to get in touch with him, but luckily he did finally get uh, get in touch with us here at Free Talk Live, and we are grateful to have Vermin Supreme on the line with us. Good evening, Vermin. Good evening, Ian. Well, you're on with to you and all the Free Staters out there. Thank you for that. Actually, you're on with my uh, co-host Mark and myself here tonight. Ah, hello, Mark and, and uh, Ian and all the Free Staters out there. <laughs> the Free Staters have always been a very important constituent base to me in the great state of New Hampshire. Now, I, I think people probably know you best, Vermin, as the presidential candidate that wears the rubber boot on his head. Is that right? I believe that most Americans do indeed recognize me as the candidate who wears the rubber boot well, on that, the head. That may, be, may make you Barring the most... That, the, that guy over there with the boot on his head. Sure. Also, them, yes. And having the boot on your head may make you uh, easy to pick out in a crowd, but really it's the policies of Vermin Supreme, the, the proposals that are, uh, are really unique and I think attract a lot of support. So for people that don't know who Vermin Supreme is, can you give us your elevator pitch? Well, yes. As you know, all politicians are vermin, and I am the Vermin Supreme. And that is why I am the most qualified candidate in this race at this time. Yes, I am a friendly fascist, and I will <laughs> promise you, Anything that your little heart desires, because you are my constituents, you are the informed voting public, and because I have no intention of keeping any promise that I make. So remember, this election year, vote early, vote often. And remember, a vote for me, Vermin Supreme, is a vote completely thrown away. Thank you. Is this your floor? <laughs> Ding! Now, Vermin... Um, I, I know you've made some, so you, as you said, you, you've made plenty of outlandish uh, uh, promises to the voting public out there. and it, That's what it takes in this day and age. If your promise is not outlandish, it's not going to land. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what are some of these, these promises that you've made to the, uh, the voting public? Uh, well, I'm most well-known, I believe, for my four-plank platform. Uh, one plank, of course, is time travel. Uh, research. I'm the only candidate who promises full funding of time travel research, and I will be the only candidate who will go back in time and kill <laughs> baby Hitler with my own bare hands before he is even born. That's number one. You know, it's rare that, before you get to the other three, it's rare that you find a presidential candidate willing to actually do their own killing. I mean, typically these people, they want to have a military, they want to have them do their bidding for them. It's very rare that, uh, that you would have a presidential candidate step up and be willing to, uh, to do that. I have to congratulate you. All too, unfortunately, uncommon. It is very true. We need more presidential candidates that are willing to do their own killing. <laughs> are there any other uh, people, people that you're willing to just go around killing as president? Well, I did have some success when I was president in the year 2024. Um, I was able to go back in time, uh, and I, <laughs> I did end up breaking uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's arm during the struggle. Um, but sadly, there was some tear in the time-space continuum, and when I came back, I was no longer president. Uh, I was, in fact, back here in 2012, and that's why I'm running again this year. So, so your right, presidency because, is actually inevitable. Right, that's what I was going to say. It's going to happen at some point here. Well, obviously by 2024. Well, once again, things may have changed up a little bit. Like I may have, may have uh, screwed the deal up a little bit, but so, you never point. know. But, but, I mean, with these promises that you've made, um, including going back in time and killing baby Hitler before well, he yes. was I even mean, born. We need a boondoggle. I mean, the boondoggles, governmental boondoggles, have great uh, market civilian uh, spinoffs, and uh, they certainly create lots of uh, government-based science jobs, yes. So you were going to th your, your four planks. We yeah. got through plank one. Let's make sure we get through the rest. All right. Yes, of course. Um, I would like to say, of course, uh, that I am the only candidate who has a plan for the imminent zombie invasion. Mm. Will Mitt Romney save you from... The imminent zombie invasion? I think not. Does Barack Obama have a plan to protect the American public from the imminent zombie apocalypse? I believe not. I am the only candidate who promises full protection. <laughs> 
protection from this zombie apocalypse. Now, what, how that, will you do that? I mean, I because will. zombies are really scary. And, and politicians are always talking about they have a plan, but, I mean, do they lay it out for you? Well, yes, but this is a, a secret plan. Ah, yes. A, the best kind of plan two, is secret. Let it out too soon. Those zombies might figure it out. <laughs> I mean, zombies really well, aren't known for their problem-solving <laughs> techniques. Indeed. In some mazes, they're, they're quite good. If you leave the brains at the end of the maze, it's very true. Of course, I also uh, plan on harnessing the awesome power of zombies for energy production. Smart. By yep. creating giant zombie-powered turbines. Uh, b- before you go on, Vermin, Vermin, before you go on, I hear music in the background. Is there any chance that you're operating an, operating an ice cream truck while you do this interview? I believe those are wind chimes. I see. Okay, I just want to make sure. You have to part of that. Um, yes, I, well, what, would you like a popsicle? <laughs> <laughs> One of those fudgicles? A cherry bomb, perhaps. So you were I saying... I love those cherry bombs. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, uh, the, 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 and what, I would like to take this opportunity to point out that there has never been an accidental zombie release from a licensed commercial zombie production turbine facility. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out. So that was what's it? Point three was that the zombie. Uh, so you've got two points on zombies, right? So like one point is. I the, suppose it's point two and a two A. I, I see. If you okay. were going to outline such a. This is just the platform. zombie platform. Got it. Got it. Yes. Now, of course, gingivitis has been eroding the gum line of this great nation of ours yeah. long enough. Yep. yep. And must be stopped. For too long, this nation has been suffering a great moral and oral decay in spirit. And incisors. A country's future depends <laughs> on its ability to bite back. We can no longer be a nation indentured. Our very salivation is at stake. So won't you join me as we bite the bullet, embrace ourselves, and cross over into the 23rd century over the bridge work of the past into the future as we become together a sea of shining smiles from sea to shining sea. Vermin Supreme is with us here on Free Talk Live. And Vermin, you've been gracious to give us more than just a segment. You're going to stick with us here. So our phone lines are open. You're willing to take phone calls. 855-450-FREE. That's 1-855-450-3733. Also going to work on the phone lines here, see if we can get them on a better line uh, in moments here. 855-450-3733. If, you have t- if you've got a question for Vermin Supreme, now's the time to ask. Bring it. The election is on Tuesday. All right, more coming up. Free Talk Live. All right, I believe we have Vermin uh, back with us on a much better line. Uh, we're going to bring him back on here. Vermin Supreme is with us. His website, verminsupreme.com. Uh, I believe still in the race, uh, even though you know you gave it your best in New Hampshire. Unfortunately, uh, Barack Obama did beat you in the Democratic primary. Uh, just barely. Yeah, just barely. Just by a smidge. And uh, But you're still in. Like Folks can still vote for you, correct, Vermin? Of course they can. Yeah, this is America, and you can vote for anyone you want. That's one of the... Wonderful things about this country's electoral system that you can write whatever you want on the ballot. Yes, they may throw it away and maybe count it as a marred or blank ballot, but nonetheless, as I've said, a vote for me is indeed a vote thrown away. Now, we've been going over your now, platform. To, yeah, uh, b- b- real quick. Now, you were president in 2024 and ca- right. went back to uh, you know battle with Napoleon. And then on your return trip in a tear in the space-time continuum, you ended up in 2012 here. Running. That is correct. And I've been trying to avoid my younger self. Uh, <laughs> if you see my younger self, please, please don't, don't let him know anything's up. I'm wondering, did you win by write-in ballot in 2024 for the presidential race? Well, no. If I remember history correctly, 2012 was the year that uh, became uh, the viral Vermin Supreme sensation that did uh, eventually lead to my juggernaut-like rise to the White House. I do have a few runs left before it reaches that stage, but I believe 2016 is right around the corner, and I will be doing a... A, a fairly decent showing, and do hope to bring the Free Pony Party uh, into the electoral arena. Have you touched on the Free Pony aspect uh, of your candidacy oh. yet? No, I have not. Once again, of course, I am the only candidate that does, in fact, promise free ponies for all Americans. I mean, everybody wants a pony, right? What about the people who have uh, apartments and this kind of thing? I mean, do you have a plan for your? Well, do you have a pony plan for those people? Uh, yes, of 
course, and this one is uh, simply not a secret plan. This is a, a fairly publicly known plan. And, uh, it's part of the ripple effect, part of the Keynesian uh, jobs creation effect uh, of government uh, in business, uh, hand in hand. Uh, I, I believe that Halliburton will uh, receive many wonderful contracts in order to help modify uh, people's homes uh, in order to house their ponies. Um, things will be a little bit different under Ponytopia. I mean, it is essentially a pony-based economy, which we will begin transitioning towards, replacing fossil fuels with pony power. <laughs> of course. Uh, just imagine no automobiles. It's, it's easy if you try, and uh, that we're all riding our ponies and pony carts. And uh, life may be a little bit slower, but we'll, we will change society accordingly. And just this change and impact and effect alone will stimulate the economy with many, many jobs for buggy whip makers, if nobody else. <laughs> we, um, we, uh, the farrier will come back. Uh, that, that's always a good thing. So, in fact, we were just talking about the bronies uh, the other night here on Free Talk Live, which I'd never heard of before. I imagine uh, these are the, the My Little Pony fanatics who yeah, are you know into uh, like My Little Pony p- porn uh, and that sort of thing. So I manage, imagine they are fairly uh, big supporters of Vermin Supreme. This election year, I have discovered that I have constituent bases that I had never even heard of previously. And yes, the fine bronies across America are indeed one of my greatest and uh, deepest uh, supporters, along with free staters, of course. Um, They were responsible for uh, very much of the meme art, and uh, they are are indeed a force to be reckoned with. And uh, I believe that if I can politicize them and uh, politicize the many other uh, unpoliticized groups that have seemed to uh, really glommed into my campaign uh, because it has struck chords across America in an extremely wide uh, swath, uh, essentially across the political spectrum. And I believe that was because my critique that I presented at that uh, New Hampshire uh, lesser-known candidate debate uh, was extremely nonpartisan, and it was more uh, directed towards the system as a whole. And as a result, uh, no one was left out. I, I'm glad you brought that debate up because uh, it was really there was a memorable moment. In fact, I think it made headlines for you uh, when you actually brought out some magic. Was it fairy dust? Uh, yes, I believe it was indeed uh, magical uh, fairy dust in order to turn Randall Terry gay, as <laughs> Jesus had instructed me prior to the debate. Um, now, this was yes, one of the uh, competing candidates. Story. Jesus told you? Uh, yes. Now, do you have Jesus' endorsement for president? Uh, not officially. But, uh, he's, he's Is he straddling the fence? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yes, that was once again one of the one of the things that uh, that really made it go so big this year. Um, there was a number of different factors uh, that that, re- that expired transpired between 2008 and 2012 because I was on the ballot, of course, as a Republican back in. Uh, 2008 in the New Hampshire primary, mm-hmm. and of course anybody who is on the ballot is allowed to attend the, those debates, that particular <laughs> debate. And uh, I was on my way to New Hampshire to attend that debate uh, back in 08, but there was this incredible blizzard. Apparently the CIA weather machines uh, were brought out in full force uh, to prevent me from attending mm. the, that particular debate. But in the meantime, in the ensuing four years, there was this transition from the print media moved over to the digital age. Right. Uh, the social media uh, developed immensely in the, in that four years. Uh, in the in the meantime, uh, wizards uh, in in the in the Harry Potter uh, trilogy and what have you uh, brought Gandalf and all these wizard uh, images to the front. Um, so right. uh, the uh, the four years also allowed my beard to get just that much grayer. And you do have a kind of a wizardly looking appearance. Indeed, and I think that was one one of the cores that really struck. Speaking uh, the, the Obama hope and change, the threats of hope and change that he was not able to deliver, and he disillusioned an entire new uh, generation of young voters. Sure, which is terrible for a country or society, uh, but for me, it's very good. Uh, <laughs> Vermin, we're taking questions here from listeners, and oh, I've got, sure. I've got a question. On. I've got a question here on on Twitter. Excuse me, on on Facebook, and I just wanted to ask you. Now, you're known as the candidate that uh, that wears the rubber boot on your, their head, right. and um, I've got a question from Facebook here asking, "What size is the boot?" 
Uh, the boot that I wear is produced right here in the USA by the uh, Tingley uh, Rainwear Corporation. Uh, you can Google them up. And the size that uh, fits my head just right is Giant. It's <laughs> called the, the Giant. Although I'm not sure they have that size still available. Is it uh, the, now, was, now, how, it, that you say still available? And it, um, you know, I mean, because you came back in time, I'm wondering: was this a this is this a boot from the past or a boot from the future? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another question. Uh, actually, before we get to uh, more questions, I want to make sure you covered all four planks. I know we got through at least three of them. Did you hit the fourth plank? Well, the the mandatory toothbrushing law was uh, was the third plank, right? Yes, the ponies was the fourth. Ponies was the fourth. Okay, so next question from Chris McDonald on Facebook. He says uh, he would like to know more about the – apparently you've made a proposal of mandatory vinyl siding for all um, historic monuments? Uh, yes, that's just a, a sub – a very sub-proposal. It's just uh, really a building code. It's, it's more of a federal <laughs> building code, I suppose. Yeah, yeah vinyl, vinyl business. Now, um, I also want, uh, from Cody on, on Facebook, um, he wants to know what you're going to do to cure death in the next two years. Well, I hold that thought. Let's get to that here in a moment because we've got him right through the end of the hour. Just enough time for you. And if you've got a question for Vermin Supreme, he's here with us uh, very graciously. He's a busy man. 855-450-FREE. 1-855-450-3733. More with Vermin Supreme. His website, by the way, verminsupreme.com. Coming up here in moments, this is Free Talk Live. It's great service. Bitinstant.com. You know, I almost, almost voted for Vermin Supreme in the primary, but I ended up writing in Ron Paul uh, on the Democratic primary here in New Hampshire. And I, I do regret it because I found out later uh, that the Democratic Ron Paul votes were not actually counted for Ron Paul. So uh, I didn't know how the you – know, it's a confusing electoral system, but uh, we've got a man here who is an expert at it. He's been doing it for years beyond when we've been living, uh, having traveled back uh, from the year 2024, uh, back in time, and is now here in, in 2012 campaigning for president again, uh, last time around as a Republican, this time as a, as a Democrat. And uh, Vermin, I'm glad that we have you. It's been something I, I've been wanting to have you on, and uh, your website's verminsupreme.com. We've covered your, the planks of your That's platform. True, but, but I, I would highly recommend that uh, for full Vermin Supreme entertainment purposes, you should just uh, search Vermin Supreme on the YouTube. That's where you'll find the real entertainment. Excellent. And, of course, if you type my name in uh, with the name of any other presidential candidate, uh, I'm sure you will find uh, engaging footage of me dicking around with them <laughs> over the past uh, several election cycles. Uh, I would like to take a moment, uh, speaking of my, my various constituent bases, and acknowledge uh, two in particular that are uh, directly involved in uh, relief efforts uh, in New York and in New Jersey. And, of course, uh, uh, they are the Occupy, uh, the Occupy movement, uh, a number of the Occupy New Yorkers and Occupy mm-hmm. New Jerseys and Occupiers from across the region are descending upon um, New York and New Jersey to uh, offer mutual aid and help to those uh, who have been afflicted by this hurricane. I would like to uh, say on the uh, Facebook machine, uh, you can go to Occupy Sandy Relief NYC or Occupy Sandy Relief NJ, New Jersey, or interoccupy.net backslash Occupy Sandy, one word, backslash and they're doing some great work. And if you're in the area and can spare some time or some resources, um, there are full-scale uh, relief efforts uh, in an alternative fashion uh, going on. Uh, my other constituent base from the uh, Rainbow Family of Living, Love, and Light, uh, a number of uh, kitchens that uh, have attend gatherings are, in fact, on their way. Uh, to that area to also offer mutual aid. To I had heard that you uh, have a habit of uh, attending rainbow gatherings. How often uh, are you likely to pop up at those? Uh, I've been attending the uh, annual gatherings the first week of July uh, probably over 20 years now. Wow. Um, I would say that it was probably uh, one of my first uh, national uh, base of support that I was able to groom uh, because it is indeed a uh, national, if not international, event. So uh, uh, by attending them, I was able to uh, meet and network with uh, you know people from all across the country. And Have you ever made it years. out to uh, to the desert, the Black Rock Desert, for the uh, the huge party they have out there every year? Uh, the Burning Man Festival. I have not had the pleasure of attending that. Seems uh, like something where uh, you would go over pretty well. Uh, I, I, I would think that uh, they are, uh, and I, I do consider burners a constituent base, and I do indeed hope to attend 
uh, the actual event one of these days. So uh, let's get back to the question from Cody, uh, from uh, Cody O'Connor, I believe, on Facebook. Yep. His question was, uh, he'd like to know if you plan to work to find the cure to death in the next one to two years. Well, um, first of all, I'm very sorry that you're not feeling well, Cody. <laughs> um, <laughs> Number two, of course, the, the war on death is uh, ongoing. I believe that we shall indeed, in our lifetimes, uh, be able to find the cure for death, uh, but it will only be available to very rich people. So, I'm we, sorry if you're not over the rich. Over the last few years, we've had another caller to this show, and it's, you know, we don't know when he's going to call in. He just randomly calls in. But Cobra Commander uh, from the G.I. Joe uh, series has been calling this program over the years. He's also been running for president. And, I look forward to the debate. Well, I, David asks, uh, Dayson Eisenhower on uh, Facebook asks if there's a possibility of a joint run, perhaps in 2016, with Cobra Commander. I don't see any real problem with that. Uh, I, I'm looking to loosen things up. Uh, you know, I have been my running mate this uh, time around is certainly uh, Jimmy McMillan uh, from the Rent is Too Damn High Party. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, and I am also his running mate uh, for his presidential bid on the Rent is Too Damn High Party. We have a mutual agreement. We are a double meme team, and we are unstoppable. <laughs> So there's something else going on uh, with Vermin Supreme that I think is really interesting, but it actually has to do with someone else who I, I don't know if you're playing a character or or what the the deal is with this, but it, it sound it looks Explain like it's it to us. Yeah, there's a movie that you're in, sort of you, but not really you. Yes, it uh, it is a movie that I worked on uh, back in the earlier 2000, uh, mid 2000s, perhaps uh, called Vote Jesus, and. Um, it is a movie which I worked with uh, producer Vic David from New York, who also produced a movie about the mole people uh, who live underneath the, the city of New York. And, uh, yes, he convinced me to get a haircut and wear a nice suit and un- go undercover and essentially infiltrate uh, the fundamentalist right wing of America. And it was indeed a very wonderful, exciting learning experience, and I did, in fact, pass. Uh, uh, We attended uh, creationist conferences. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Jerry Falwell for a 20-minute interview. Uh, We went to the Creationist Museum in Kentucky with the animatronic dinosaurs, with uh, frolicking with the animatronic children. Hmm. Uh, We attended a Billy Graham crusade. Uh, I spent a, a couple days with the Westboro Baptist Church. Oh my goodness! We attended a an abstinence rally at the, in the Philadelphia Spectrum Center, um, where they had every imaginable genre of music, uh, but it was all uh, Jesus based uh, music. So you Did had they... your Jesus hip hop, your Jesus right. jazz, your Jesus. Uh, jam bands it, it, it jesus was metal did, now did and they have like included, a big display of chastity belts there i believe so they, they were they were handing out rings i they, they were yes chastity cages for their weenies i, I don't know what the hell they were doing but Folks they were can, certainly can, pumping up those young people and getting there getting all their hormones going with all that devil music and and they then they were totally going to touch themselves or each other it was uh Herman, uh, folks can go to YouTube, search for Vote Jesus. It's the first uh, first couple options. There's a couple trailers there that, yeah, uh, that crop up. There's a trailer and several excerpts from the movie. Uh, we will be showing the movie, or screening the movie, rather, tomorrow in Gloucester, Massachusetts, at the Cape Ann Community Cinema, a very rare showing. Um, well, that's very it, rare because the movie actually hasn't been released yet, has it? It, it has never been released. I, I don't know if it ever will be at this <laughs> rate. There's a... Several different factors involved, but nonetheless, uh, I'm trying to show it here and there. Don't tell anyone, please. Apparently, we've got somebody <laughs> on the line who wants to talk to you here. Uh, let's bring on Ryan in Charleston, uh, West Virginia. Ryan, you're on with Vermin Supreme. Go ahead, quickly. Ryan, in Charleston. Going once. Right and he dropped off the line. Apparently, he uh, was very upset about you and wanted to say you were ignorant or something like that. And I think you're one of the most well-informed uh, candidates out there running. Uh, you know, if I, it's a toss-up again for me, Vermin. I'm not sure if I should uh, write in NOTA for none of the above, which is what I was going to do. But I, you're just so persuasive. I mean, get, what, you people could, that you are could on write the f- me in for vice president, I would not be offended. Good point. Now, people are, who are maybe on the fence here tonight, what what would you say to them to win their vote? Once again, I mean, personally, voting, I'm very ambivalent on the process itself. I don't believe this country has uh, one of the finer election systems available in the civilized world. Um, 
I offer you the opportunity to throw your vote away in my direction. I don't require it. I don't need it. It doesn't really do anything for me, and it probably doesn't do anything for you. But if you want to make a statement, if you want to make a real vote of protest, go ahead. Write me in. Make my day. Or not. It's okay. I know. Many of my supporters do not vote for me. I accept that. I am not everybody's cup of tea, obviously not Ryan, and I accept that. And um, But once again, I do have a vast number of constituents in this country uh, who I am representing or not representing, as the case may be. Vermin, it has been great having you on Free Talk Live. I really appreciate your time tonight. Your website again, vermintsupreme.com. I imagine if you don't win this time around, you're going to be back in 2016. We know and, you get it by 2024. And I want to get you in the studio if you ever come through Keene, New Hampshire. We'll talk to you later. 